Hey everybody, it's Jake McIntyre with Kelly Wright Real Estate. Let's talk about how to buy a home in 2024 and more specifically in Utah, because that's where I am. So quick disclaimer, this will be a bit generic because it has to be. Each buyer consultation that I have is tailored to the very specific scenarios and needs of each buyer. Now, buying a home is a really big deal. So I invite you to take the time to watch this whole video. And towards the end, I'm going to give you the cheat code to this process. Now, I've been doing this for many years, and I've helped hundreds of people. So let's get started. Number one, it's the money. How are you going to pay for this? Even if you are one of the third of buyers that are paying cash, you're going to need a statement of proof of funds. If I don't know it, then I can't make a seller or a listing agent believe me either. So if you are borrowing money, you need to apply for a mortgage or get a pre-approval. Now, I know many great lenders that have a good track record, but if you come to me with one in hand, then I also need a copy of that pre-approval letter so I can communicate with them. So whether it's cash or whether it's financed, we need to have proof. This is going to help establish your budget. Now, if you're borrowing money, the loan program you're approved for will have down payment criteria. Now, maybe that's zero down payment or maybe it's 5%. And maybe you're being gifted some funds to help you purchase the home. Either way, uh, we need to know what that is. Uh, let's use a fake scenario. Let's uh, talk about Frank and Tammy. Now, they make $75,000 a year, and they have no debt. With FHA loan guidelines, they would qualify for a $400,000 loan at 6.25%. And the down payment is 3.5%, which is about $14,000. And on a 30-year loan, that payment is going to be about $2,600 a month. Now, we spoke with Frank and Tammy, and they agree that they're comfortable with that payment. Now, this is really important. A lot of people get approved for a higher purchase price than they are comfortable with when it comes to the monthly payment. So let's figure this out beforehand. Otherwise, you could find yourself in a difficult spot, and it wouldn't be any fun to be house poor. Also, we need to deal with closing costs. Now, these are fees associated with financing, like appraisal fees, lending fees, title fees. Um, but also rolled in that are prepaid costs to help set up your escrow accounts, which cover your taxes and your insurance. Now, for Frank and Tammy, we're looking at about $6,500 for closing costs, uh, which most of the time we plan on asking for the seller to help pay for or contribute to those. Uh, again, for brevity, we're not going to go into all the different ways to handle closing costs. Uh, in some cases, the buyers are just going to handle this themselves with cash. And this is on top of the down payment. Uh, by the way, cash buyers, they really have almost no closing costs. I mean, just a small dock fee uh, to pay at the, uh, for the title company to close the transaction. Now, hopefully this fake scenario helps drive home the point to address the financing financing slash budget right at the beginning. Now, sometimes when a new potential buyer contacts me, they get a, a little bit frustrated because I can't answer their questions very specifically. Um, there are many, many, many different loan programs and how you qualify is determined by credit history, your income, and your debts. But until we both understand your budget, I'm really not all that helpful. So be like Frank and Tammy and get pre-approved. Okay, once we've established that and you're comfortable with your budget, I like to talk about the timeline. I've had some people come to me and say that they need to be in a new home with, and they've got 45 days to do it, sometimes less. And others are nine months out and they're before their lease even ends. So no matter what your situation is, I, we need to understand the transition phase to your new home. And are you moving from out of town? Are you familiar with the area? Are you coming from another state or even another country? And do you have a home to sell? These are all very important things that we need to understand to make this process run smoothly. Once we've nailed that down, then we move into criteria. What kind of home do you want to live in and where? And the budget is gonna have a lot to say about this. Um, furthermore, we need to know how many beds, bedrooms do you need? Bathrooms, garage size, yard, are you looking for a single family home or a town home or condo? I'll be able to demonstrate what options you have with that cross section of all this information. Now, Frank and Tammy, for example, 
if they were looking for, say, a single family home in Bountiful at the $400,000 price range, probably not going to be a lot of options. And if there are, they may not be in very good condition. Uh, in just the last week, I've had two different consultations with two different buyers. And after going through this process and understanding what their budget was, but also what their expectations and needs were, it unfortunately just wasn't realistic. And that's part of what I need to do is be upfront and honest with what uh, the realities of our real estate market are. Um, really quick, just as an example, uh, if we were to look for Frank and Tammy between three seventy-five dollars and $400,000, active listings in Davis County, there are 32 active listings. If we were to look into Weber County, let's just get that in there, there's only 23. And inventory is going to fluctuate uh, greatly uh, in different areas and different price ranges. Uh, I also like to talk about the real realities of home ownership. So do you want a newer home with less maintenance or a 100-year-old home with higher main maintenance? It's important to understand the difference. Um, let's just get this back up here. All right, great. Um, I live in an area that has many, many, many homes that are over uh, 100 years of age, but they're just more expensive to maintain. So I want to talk about what I hear from a lot of people um, these days, and that's about getting a really good deal. So usually when I hear people say that, they're hoping to buy a home that in reality is worth $400,000, but they're buying it for less, $350,000. Now, you've got to understand if you know about this home that's for sale, there's a good likelihood a lot of other people, do, uh, uh, other people do as well. And what if that home that uh, you're looking at really isn't what you want anyways? Are you more motivated by the deal or are you more motivated in getting what you really want? In my experience, if a home is 10 out of 10, perfect, everything somebody is looking for, buyers are willing to pay full price and sometimes more. Getting a good deal can come with a lot of nuances. So if the home is for sale for $400,000, but you get it for three fifty, dollars but it's been on the market for four months, is that really a good deal? I would say it's really just a fair market deal. Um, I have seen people get fantastic buys before, absolutely. But they were also what the client was looking for anyways. Generally, buyers are trying to buy the right home, and price is only part of that. Um, certainly this would be different if it, you're an investor. Numbers are the most important thing. So now that we've gotten this far, it's time to commit and make this a priority. Inventory is a moving target and you never know when a good home or dare I say the right home comes up. If your criteria allows, strongly consider new construction, especially right now. Uh, inventory right now is a little bit low for resale homes. Now, the cheat code that I mentioned before, and actually I'd like to put this right at the top of the list, is get a good realtor. Get a realtor that you trust. Um, the right realtor is going to be looking out for your needs and guide you through what can be a very emotional or sometimes stressful process. Someone that is available and communicates easily. You need to feel comfortable in asking questions. Okay, So get a really good realtor right from the beginning. Now, let's take this process right up to the point of where you would actually write an offer. Once we've got everything lined up, questions are answered, expectations are set, and you've got your, uh, a really good real estate agent, that agent is going to automate property searches. But in reality, in today, you're going to be looking at the internet 10, 15, 20 times a day to see what new listings have come on. And that's fine. Um, but as properties come up that look like they're a match, it's going to be important to see them quickly. Uh, you're most likely not the only one that is looking for that same kind of home. So you want to see it as soon as possible. Also, you need to, do, you need to be open to the option of adjusting criteria along the way uh, as inventory levels fluctuate. Um, you may see all of the criteria in a certain area, all of the homes that meet a certain criteria in a certain area right out of the gates. Maybe you need to change your area. Maybe you need to change your price criteria. So one thing I also like to do for my clients is consider for sale by owners 
and even expired listings, stuff that went off the market because it didn't sell. Maybe those people are still interested in selling, and we can try and reach out to them as well. Now, when you see the right home, you're probably going to know it. And rarely does there exist an absolutely perfect home. So I caution buyers, you might want to look for something that's a 7 or 8 out of 10. Okay, And that's a, a good place to be. Also, multiple offers do happen. We're seeing them happening right now. A good agent is going to know how to navigate this. At the end of the day, though, put in your best offer and hope for the best. Sometimes someone else just wants it more than you do, and that's okay. So, in conclusion, this is how you buy a home in 2024. It's also how you bought a home in 2020. It's how you're going to buy a home in 2025. It's how you did it in 2021 and how you'll do it in 2026 as well. So here's my invitation to you. If you're going to be buying a home and you're in my service area, which is northern Utah, all of my contact information is down below. Let's talk. Let me know what you're looking for. I'm going to give you my best advice, and let's see if we want to work together. If you work or you're going to be buying a home outside of my area, that's okay. You can still reach out to me, and let's have a conversation. And if you need my help to help you find a good agent, I can do that also. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you found uh, some good information in this video. Again, don't hesitate to reach out to me for any questions whatsoever, and good luck.